All right, man, Torture Talk. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hope you had a good morning. Hope you had a good morning, man. Yeah, man, so look, man. Ah, man, yesterday was a, ro- a roller coaster. Yesterday was a roller coaster. Today, all right, so today, man, we're talking about Kendrick Lamar. Rory and Maul has spoke on the interview with SZA. You know what I'm saying? And now you yesterday I did an episode where Joe Button spoke on it. And I want to get Rory and Maul's perspective on it because obviously these guys don't get along and you already know that uh, I would say they have a, a, a big time uh, glazer over there at um, in, in uh, your boy Maul. So let's just see what they said about this whole thing before i get into that you know i gotta get my spill this is torture talk if you like the content please consider subscribing if you're new here let me work for your subscription today all the beautiful sexy ladies put one in the chat all the fellas y'all know where to find the ones at over there just don't harass them i don't sell no merch but i do have content that's absolutely free but if you want to leave a donation links on the screen cash app paypal is in the description thank y'all for all the donations i really appreciate y'all man i really do from the bottom of my heart they called me the hidden gem i went from 1300 subscribers to over over 11,000. i should be 12,000 by actually by today you know what i'm saying and a million by monday morning man yeah so also let me know where you're from too man let me know where you're from had a bunch of people out here you know what i mean somebody from the philippines damn damn somebody from the philippines god damn you know what i'm saying I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. So look, man, we're going to get into this clip, man, and we'll be back to discuss. All right, man. So make sure y'all go and follow this guy. Links will be in the description. You know what it is. You know how I do. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all sub to this guy and get his subs up. Help him out over there. All right, man. So let's get it, man. <laughs> like that SZA and Kendrick have a relationship where they can discuss some of the stuff that they talked about, mm-hmm. get deep. They're both both spiritual people. I enjoyed the combo for what it was. I just don't know if, if this was the time to do this SZA safe interview mm. with everything that's going on. The way fans demand certain interviews at times like this. Mm-hmm. What, what What is this? What is this? What is this fan dictatorship now that we that we are? We are all of a sudden bowing down to for some reason. Like, why, why is it that Kendrick Lamar has to wait to do something? Why does he have to wait to do something? He never did. So well, let me get this right. Most of y'all always say Kendrick Lamar, he takes too much time. He takes too much time. Why does he take time? Why does he take time? Then when he does, when he, when he does come out with something, we oh, should have waited. I don't know if this is the right time. I don't know. Like, what are we talking about here? How are you even saying that? How are you even saying that it's not the right, it might not be the right time? Might not be the right time for him to do an interview. After he just came off to one of the biggest songs of all time, it's not the right time to do an interview. Come on, bro. Because SZA being his friend, I thought asked incredible questions, which we'll get to because I want to ask him all the exact same questions. I mm-hmm. think she's a great interviewer. But once they got into some of the current stuff of what's happening with the beef, they're friends. There's not going to be any pushback or explanation on anything. And I think there was a lot of fans that were at the edge of their seats waiting for Kendrick Lamar to address everything that's happened in the past six months. Mm-hmm. Even like scissor rightfully so was not scared, but like, yo, should I even, do you even want to go here? And they had a quick, not like us conversation, which was kind of just speaking in circles to be quite honest to me. Um, this was the only question where I was like, right. how was that speaking in circles? She asked him a question. He gave an answer. How? She said, what does that mean to you? And he gave an articulate answer. He broke down what it mean to him. How is that speaking in circles? I don't understand it. Maybe y'all don't, maybe a lot of y'all don't, y'all, y'all didn't get the answer that y'all wanted to hear. Y'all wanted the juicy and, and, and him to say some outlandish stuff and him to go back and diss Drake. That's what y'all wanted. Y'all wanted that. Y'all wanted him to actually just like, well, not like us means that Drake is this and that. That's what y'all was looking for. That's exactly what y'all was looking for, but he didn't give y'all that. He gave y'all, he gave y'all an answer that will make y'all think. You know what I mean? That's what it was. Hey, man, I didn't need this. Everything before that I thought 
was great. Mm-hmm. And I loved their back and forth. But, but she I, asked I, to break down not like us. And we don't even like really get to the nitty gritty of what that song is about. And then it just becomes, yo, it's because I have morals and values. If you identify with that, you identify with not like us. Like, all right, man, you call. <laughs> yo, that was a genius answer. That was an answer that is going to mess y'all up for a long time. If you identify with this, then you identify with not like us as being a moral man. <laughs> so that must mean that if you identify with not like us, you ain't a moral man. <laughs> Yo, Kendrick Lamar is a genius, bro. He's a genius. Just say it. Just say it, Rory and Maul. Just say it. Just say Kendrick is a genius, bro. Just say he's a genius. Whether you want to see him evil genius or he's a mastermind. Either way, he's a fucking genius. Just say it, bro. Y'all might as well say it. <laughs> I'm a pedo. Can we get into that? Mm-hmm. I just have of what that song is about. And then it just becomes, yo, it's because I have morals and values. If you identify with that, you identify with not like us. Like, all right, man, you called him a pedo. Can we get into that? Mm-hmm. I just had some follow up questions. I wasn't mad at his first explanation. But since we're bringing this up. Can we get into the record for real? She tried. She said, break that down for me after his initial response. Yeah. And then he went on to, to your point, the, uh, this man has morals, values. He believes in something. He stands on something. He's not pandering. And then kind of on and on about someone that's not afraid to make mistakes, um, from his experiences and learn as you know, which is great, but I just don't know if that record is as deep as the explanation that he is making. I think <laughs> me, <laughs> Yes, it is. The record is not deep. That's probably one of the most, that's probably one of, one of his deepest records that is so, uh, uh, how would I say, mass appealing. Bro, it's so many different things he said in that record that you can l- dive into and learn from. You sitting here saying that you don't know if that record is as deep as his explanation. <laughs> It goes right with his explanation. You know what I'm saying? It goes right with it. Man, I can't believe this. The Grams, Euphoria, 616, deep records. But the one we're choosing to have that type of response, to me, was a pretty flat-out record of, hey, you um, are nasty, and this is a great mustard beat. Yeah. I don't know if it's that deep. but bugging the fuck out. <laughs> You, you, your summary of not like us is, hey, you're nasty and this is a great mustard beat. That's the summary that you get from not like us. <laughs> Yo, I swear to you, I never seen nothing like it. I never seen nothing like it. That's your summary of not like us. You're nasty and this is a great mustard beat. That's your summary. So, the, so uh, obviously you would, you wouldn't, you wouldn't really. I want to say, I mean, well, I can't really say that, but you got to know that he broke down the whole slavery thing. Got to know there's a bunch of other things in there that meant a lot to people. Yo, yo, you, I can't believe that that was your summary. And the only reason why you said that, the only reason why you said that is because of his explanation. Because you want to make his explanation much more bigger than what you say in the record is. That's the reason why. I, th- I thought it was a cool interview. Don't, just don't even bring up the not like us part if we're not going to get a real detailed answer about what Sis is asking. Because mm. to Julian's credit, she did. <laughs> Yo, so y'all mad. So all y'all mad because he didn't acknowledge Drake and he didn't say that he need that y- y'all want to hear him say all the details of why he dissed Drake. Y'all want to hear that. Y'all want to hear it. It, it's really upsetting to y'all that he just he, he treats this like it was nothing. <laughs> and y'all looking at Drake as he's this guy. He's the guy. He ain't no more. And it's like, damn, y'all have to accept the loss, bro. Accept it. Some of y'all don't even really believe. I believe that some of y'all, y'all can't even believe that Drake took a L. 
Some of y'all still to this day can't believe that he took a L. I believe some of y'all don't even realize that he that he took a major L. Y'all still out here pretending like he didn't take a L. And then you sitting here saying, well, not like us. I mean, it's a, he said a bunch of nasty stuff and it's a must, cool mustard beat. Come on, Roy. Come on. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Give some pushback. Like, can you break down exactly what that is? And I think after he gave that PC answer, she was like, all right, I see where this is at. I'm not going to pry. Let's move on. Mm. But other than that, I thought it was a, a phenomenal interview. Um, loved Scissor's questions. Uh, I don't know I, about phenomenal, but it was good. It's cool to just see two superstars go but, back and I mean, forth on like topics. The, the thing about Roy that I don't like. <sighs> Roy loves to try to he loves to try to play both sides. He loves and I think he gets that from Joe Buttons. Joe Buttons does that a lot. He'll be like, well, I listen, and I love me some such and such, but this and that, but I love me some such and such. It's like, you don't have to tell me you love somebody if you want to criticize them, bro. You ain't got to say that. You ain't got to preference that. I know some people need that, but you ain't got to do that. Your actions will speak for you. You know what I'm saying? The way you treat things, the way you handle things, that'll speak for you. You ain't got to do that. Rory does that a lot. He always plays a lot. He plays both sides all the time. Like, not all the time. I ain't going to throw him like that. But he plays both sides a lot. Instead of just saying, look, man, I ain't like that. I ain't like, I ain't like that part of the interview. You know what I'm saying? He gets up here and says, well, the interview was phenomenal. It's just, uh, you know what I'm saying? I think he should have listened to him, man, for real. It's like, come on, bro. Come on. Like this. I, I, it was I more thought like that was a conversation of two friends that a writer just happened to be sitting in on. Um, you know, which was cool. I guess they want to call it an interview, but I don't think that it felt like an interview. I think SZA and Kendrick talk often, and this time a writer from Harper's Bazaar just happened to be sitting next to them, uh, writing everything down or recording. <clears throat> but um, you know, Kendrick, I, I, I like some of his answers. Um, for me, uh, him breaking down um the record and the man that he is was the most interesting part. Um, only because if you know. I respect it. I respect Kendrick as an artist. But if you say he's a man with morals and things like that, I just, you know, again, if things are true, then so be it. If not, then you got to wear it. But to have morals, to say you're a man of morals, but then, you know, make that allegation that somebody is a pedo. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what we as what we know, if Kendrick has information that we don't, but from what we know, that man is not mm -hmm. uh, a pedophile. I just look at that a little like, I don't know. Ah, oh, man. I'm going to have to run this back a little bit. Let's go. No. What we, as what we know, if Kendrick has information that we don't, but from what we know, that man is not <clears throat> uh, a pedophile. I just look at that a little like, I don't know if somebody with morals does that. That's, I, that's why I just wish they would have left it alone. Unless we were getting a, a full-blown interview about this past year, not just his personal stuff, then I just leave it. But I don't think that, and here's what I think that a lot of y'all miss. Kendrick Lamar don't owe y'all no explanation. He don't have to explain what that means. He don't have to explain it to your liking. He explained it the way he thought it was. Y'all interpreted something different. You're saying that basically he put a stain on somebody. And I'll be honest with y'all. I think the only people that keep bringing up the pedo things, the pedo stuff, the PDF file, is Y'all, I think y'all, you academics, uh, and uh, what's the name? I don't think people are really even paying attention to that when it comes to Drake. I think it's normalized that Drake has done things, or or I ain't gonna say done things, but he has said things with younger women that people are they they became normalized to. I don't think people are even worried about that. I think y'all worried about that because y'all want to know if it's true or not, or y'all want him to explain how he came to that. He don't have to. Kendra don't have to explain nothing to none of y'all. Just like Drake don't have to explain nothing to none of y'all. Drake said that this man was, uh, this man's baby 
mother had a baby by his best friend. That to me is just as bad as you saying that this man is a PDF file. You're saying that this woman that he's been with all his life, for the most part, the woman that's been in his life that had his child, you're saying that that baby is not his baby. That's his best friend's baby. But y'all y'all got a nerve to complain about this man calling this man a PDF. Uh, listen, it was a mudslinging contest and Kendrick won. Whether you want to you put it like that, Kendrick won. He won. You, it's all fair and love and war. Y'all can't be mad because Kendrick won off of that. You can say, oh, I, if you were a moral man, okay, so you must don't think Drake, Drake's a moral man. You must think Drake is a sleazeball because he made up some stuff too. Well, yeah. Like, I, I love the personal stuff they talked about. I think it was an extension of some of the questions that I had after Mr. Morale, like of, mm. of his journey. Mm. Um, and I think SZA got into that bag and kind of extended Mr. Morale to where he's at now. Because Mr. Morale is what, three years ago? Uh, Two. Two. So... It was nice to see the hear the update of you know Kendrick's healing journey and that entire thing. Um, the, the interesting part was uh, when SZA broke down the way that she writes and records, and she act from the lens of other artists. I thought, Let me tell you this: I've seen I've I've seen everybody online say it, but I, I keep telling y'all I've been gaining more and more respect for for Kendrick. You know why? He's a cold motherfucker. He's a guy who. <laughs> Bro, listen, bro. Listen, bro. <laughs> he called Kendrick a cold motherfucker. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> he said, Kendrick, you cold motherfucker. <laughs> Knows how to rock the culture to sleep. And I've compared him to Jay Z. Jay Z did that to us multiple times, played in our face. A guy who claims he's standing on morals and principles. But every time we see his actions, it seems like it's not the truth. A guy who say he's only for the culture, but as soon as he gets an opportunity to go get on a platform that's not cultural, he runs to it. I love it. I love it. That is, you see how uh, you see how people what they do, they try to minimize something and make it seem like okay. You said that he ran to a platform that is not of the culture. Football is of the culture. The Grammys, whether y'all like it or not, is of the culture. That's just the bottom line. It might be a lower part of the culture, but it's a part of the culture. Grammy Awards are a part of hip-hop culture. I know y'all don't want to hear it. I know y'all hate to hear it. Most of the athletes in the NBA are black. Most of the athletes in the NFL are black. That is of the culture. Name me something that is of the culture or not of the culture that's involving black, multiple black people. Name me something. Everything that, especially foundational black Americans, everything that we do whether you like it or not, is a part of the culture that is on a popular scale, I would say. So it would be the NFL, the NBA. You got to say it because when you go to school and you want to be an NFL player, you do what it takes. I always say that in the hood, there are a couple of things that <clears throat> people inspire to be one is a NFL player or a sports athlete. Two is a hood, you know, hood nigga, street nigga, whatever you want to call it. You know what I'm saying? And three would be a uplifter, an activist, somebody that gets out of the hood and helps. So those three avenues, most of people take that lives in the hood. So for you to say that that is not of the culture, <clears throat> if you take black men out of sports, NBA or the NFL, most likely it won't succeed. 
And that's that. Because I like when niggas like Kendrick rock you bitch ass niggas to sleep and with this culture, culture, culture shit and then shits on you every single time. Oh, it's all about the culture. You were rocking with you were rocking with Colin Kaepernick, but now you don't give a fuck because Super Bowl's time is here. I bet. Say less. Oh, how how is <clears throat> again? People like academics. They always leave out key details in this whole thing. Always, right? Colin Kaepernick left everybody out there. You can't say that Colin Kaepernick got left alone because he was the one that took a deal. He took a deal. You can't blame Kendrick for that. This is unbelievable. Oh, listen, oh, we got to watch the culture diet. What about these radio personalities and media niggas? And when you could give a nod to it. That, that shit right there. <laughs> Yo. That right there is what got him, bro. That is that got under his skin. He can't get around it. Those words that Kendrick said, the media personalities, I want to see them bleed or or, or uh, don't hit me up unless unless they head cracked or something like that. He said, I can't remember the lyrics, but yeah, that really messed academics up. That really did because he's bringing that up. <laughs> Listen. Time is here. I right, bet. Say less. Oh, oh, listen. Oh, we got to watch the culture diet. What about these radio personalities and media niggas? And when you could give a nod to a nigga, you think you ran to do your first interview at Harper Bazaar? Real nigga. I like that. I like when, yo, I like when an artist plays in the face of these niggas. Yeah, he's playing with y'all. The nigga rap that Drake was a colonizer. <laughs> nigga, late, at least Drake trying to tap in with me, Kai, and like some like, like some, some little streamer niggas. Why would he want to tap in with y'all when y'all the ones that side with Drake? I don't understand this. I really don't. Why would he want to do that? Why would he want to do that? I don't understand it. You sitting here saying... At least Drake taps in. Drake don't tap in with y'all. I think he tapped in with Kai. That's it. But he never tapped in with you. He was never on your stream. He used you too. He even used Kai. He used Aiden Ross. He used all of y'all to his advantage. He ain't tapping in with y'all. He's using y'all. That's the difference between Kendrick and Drake. Drake don't need and Kendrick don't need y'all. Drake don't either. But Drake uses y'all. Because he want to stay, he want to stay relevant to whatever streamers have all his uh, all their fans. Kendrick don't do that. You gotta respect that Kendrick don't hit you up just so he can. Cause you would say something about that. You would say, well, Kendrick be hitting only hitting us up because he want to stay relevant. He don't do none of that. Kendrick don't do none of that. And on top of that, you gotta respect the fact that whether you say he had a he had an interview with Bizarre Magazine. He still, he still did the interview with his label mate. So you can't say nothing. He still did that. Let's see what else he got to say. The first interview this nigga did, we don't even know what a Harper Bazaar is. <laughs> Elliot Wilson over there like, what the fuck? What is this? <laughs> Who is Why would I want to do it? Why would anybody want to do an interview with Elliot Wilson? Why? He's another Drake Glazer. He's another one that says some outlandish shit. Why? You niggas want him to reward y'all after y'all constantly talk crazy. Why would he want to reward any of you dudes? Y'all constantly talk crazy. I can't believe this. This. <laughs> nope, not you. <laughs> DJ Hattie, like he just came up face looking like a glazed donut. Are we ready for the interview? No, nigga, get out of here. <laughs> Fuck out of here. It's not time for no goddamn interview with you, bum. Get out of here. But you see how, do you see how they try to twist it and spin it to his like, he has to do interviews with people he know. 
He can't do an interview where he can't do whatever he want to do. He has to do an interview with these people. Because if he would have did an interview with DJ Head, then you would have clearly said something about that. You said, well, why he didn't do a, why he didn't do an interview with that person? Why he didn't do an interview with him? That's crazy. He has to do an interview with who you believe he should do an interview with. And even if you do believe that, you're still going to have a reason or, or some type of critique or criticism of it. All the time. What? <laughs> what? Got a throat full of semen. <laughs> nope. Not your turn. Oh, my God. Bro, I can't who gets the fuck? I can't believe that you literally said that. When you literally be blowing Drake, bro. I never seen anybody do, do more blowing, cop blowing to an artist like you do Drake, bro. You sitting here saying that DJ Head is doing that? I don't think so. He don't be like you. You are out of control with it. You're out of control. This is crazy. Just look. <laughs> Kendrick, kudos, fucking great. I like it, I like it. I told y'all this before, y'all didn't want to believe me. I said Kendrick used the culture, gained the infinity stones, and he's still talking that, that Mr. Morale shit. Oh, I want to change the industry. I want to watch the party die. And I'm telling you, he got the Infinity Stone. All it takes is a snap to change right now, right this moment. He is so, I'm telling you, he got more power than Drake right now. In terms of. <laughs> finally admitted it. <laughs> you finally admitted it, huh, nigga? You finally admitted it. Give this nigga a round of applause. Give him a real round of applause. Give him a round of applause, everybody. <laughs> finally admitted it, huh, nigga? You finally had to admit it. Because it's the truth. And you niggas can't get around it. Y'all can't get around it. Infecting culture. If he wanted to speak out against drill music, he could. Not saying I don't think he could, he could eradicate, but but he would have people look at it a certain way. By the way, he was never this powerful when he spoke out for X. And by the way, I thank him for that, Kendrick. I fuck with you for that. Just say on Freud, his family, XX Tentacion, his whole fan base appreciated the fact that you stood up to the, to the DSPs for him. But when a guy is living on this whole watch, the, 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 the party die, he want to do A, B, C, and D because there's people poisoning the community, serving up propaganda, the colonizers are poison. That's what he's saying. He has the single most important opportunity to snap his finger like Thanos. And cause an entire ripple effect. You want to restore media to where it's not by propaganda? How about you go holla at A, B, C, D, E, F, G journalists within that black community who used to do that traditional media that maybe you appreciated back then? <laughs> so you basically okay with propaganda? <laughs> Yo, Kendrick, really, I'm telling y'all, man, I'm telling y'all, there is a mental disorder that Kendrick has put on a lot of Drake fan stands, whatever you want to call it. He is advocating for propaganda. He's literally advocating for propaganda. When you say Kendrick is trying to get rid of all this stuff and he's trying to get rid of all the journalists that would propaganda, you are literally advocating against that. How are you advocating against that? This is crazy. You could do that. But again, that's why I like Kendrick. You don't. I like it. Fuck it. I like it. 
So let's get into this. He does an interview with Harper Bazaar. All right, so let me start. I'm gonna stop it there. Actually, it actually stops there anyway. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. You have to acknowledge, man. You know what I'm saying? And I think that they're they're upset that Kendrick has taken over. And he did it in such a beautiful fashion that they can't stand it. They hate the fact that he took Drake off here. Because, again, Kendrick is right. Watch the party die. I think they, they don't like the fact that the rap industry is about to change. And they can't stand it. It really bothers them. It really does. And... It is what it is, man. They have to suck it up, man. They have to suck it up, and they have to keep it, and they have to take it. But either way, man, y'all have yourself a good morning, 12 o'clock show coming up. See y'all, man. Peace. Bye. <laughs>